Okay, when we started hypothesis testing last time, we talked about whether the results were statistically significant or not. Well, how we measure the, whether they're statistically significant or not is by using the p-value. So now we're going to start looking at the p-value. So in 1980 and again in 2010, a Gallup poll asked a random sample of 1,000 U.S. citizens, are you in favor of the death penalty for a person convicted of murder? In 1980, the proportion was 0.66. In 2010, it was 0.64. Does this data provide evidence that the proportion of U.S. citizens favoring the death penalty was higher in 1980 than it was in 2010? Use P1 for the proportion in 1980 and P2 for the proportion in 2010. Well, since it's telling us what to use for the different proportions, we will not have to define them. So state the null and alternative. Again, this is a situation when we're talking about two different samples. So we have P1 equals P2. Because in the null hypothesis, it's always equal. We're always assuming there is no change. Now, the alternative, this case, it says it's higher in 1980. So now it is giving us our direction for the difference. So we want to see if P1 is greater than P2. Now, for the sample statistic, that's going to be p hat sub 1 minus p hat sub 2, which is 0 0.66 minus 0 0.64, which is 0 0.02. Now, a randomization distribution, assuming the null hypothesis is true, is shown. Which of the following is closest to the p-value? Well, if we look at this, we have 0 0.02 is our sample statistic. So from 0 0.02 down, it's going to be the p-value. Oh, and I didn't write the possible p-values down here. We have 0 0.001, 0 0.05, 0 0.20, 0 0.25, 0 .20, and 0 0.50. Well, if it were 0 0.50, that means our test statistic would be right at the mean, which it is not. 0 0.2. We want to see approximately how many dots were here, so we'd have to count these and put it over 1,000 to see what it would be. 0 0.05, that's only 5%. 5 percent. 5 percent of 1,000 would be 50. This looks like it's more than 50. And 0 0.001 means it would only be one dot, which this is definitely more than one. So the p-value is the proportion of dots in the indicated area of 0 0.2 or greater, and it's closest to zero point two zero. 
There are approximately 158 dots there over the 1,000, would be 0 0.158. which is closest to 0 0.20, then any other value given. Now we're going to look at another problem. Again, we're back with that test to see if an app or caffeine is better. So we have our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. Null is that the mean of those who took a nap equals the mean of those who took caffeine. The alternative is that they're not equal. Sample statistic is the mean of those who slept minus the sample mean of those who took caffeine. And this turns out to be 3.0 based on the, or that's what we're being given. So we want to use this randomization distribution to state the p-value. Because it's a not equal to, it's a two-tailed test. So three, they're actually indicating, here's three, and here's negative three. So we see in the image that the proportion in the tail beyond the sample statistic of three is 0 0.022. It gives it to us. Because it's a two-tailed test, we have to account for both tails. So the p-value equals 2 times 0 0.022, which is 0 0.044. Now, with this next one, we're just seeing which p-value shows the strongest evidence. Well, the strongest evidence is the smaller p-value, because that's saying that that occurring by chance, or the probability of that answer occurring by chance, is very slim. So for the first one, p-value of 0.95 or p-value of 0 0.02, 0 0.02 is less than 0.95, so that p-value is showing stronger evidence against H sub 0 and in favor of HA. P-value of 0 0.008 or p-value of 0 0.02, 0 0.008 is the smaller of the two, so that is showing stronger evidence. 